Hello, statistical scholars. Okay, so today I'm going to be looking at performing a chi-square test using the following data. So in March and April of 2001, the Pew Research Center asked 2,142 U.S. adults and 10, 1,050 college presidents if they would rate their job in, in the higher education system as providing value for the money spent for students and their families with excellent, good, only fair, and then poor. And then obviously we got some no, don't answers, don't knows. Um, so as you look at this data, we're gonna decide, hey, did US adults rate this differently than what college presidents did? Because we wanna know, is there a difference in the distribution between US adults and the college presidents? Um, is the statistic independence or homogeneity? So I'm not asking are um, these group, <laughs> this US adults versus college presidents, these groups, you know, independent of their rating, because that's what a test of independence would test, this variable, the people, against their rating, which makes absolutely no sense. So clearly this is a test of homogeneity. I want to see if the U.S. adults rate the same as college presidents. So it's a matter of bias we're checking here. So really, we're looking at a, um, this is a test of homogeneity. Um, so we're looking at, uh, we're concerned with the distribution of one variable rating of spending for the educational dollars for the two groups, U.S. adults and college residents, which I already said. So we're going to perform a chi-square test for homogeneity. So we're going to write the appropriate hypotheses before we begin. Come on, get rid of the numbering. Okay, so my HO here, remember HOs are always the statements about equality. So here I would say the distributions for... <clears throat> I'm sorry, is the same, because you got to have something about sameness or equality. I just said that <laughs> for adults and for presidents. I swear, my left hand is always faster at typing than my right hand. Okay, and so my alternative would be that their distributions actually look different. So the distributions... is different for adults and presidents. Sorry, I didn't do my and for that time. Please forgive me. All right, so we're going to check the necessary assumptions to see if we can perform this test. So uh, the counted data condition, clearly I've got counts in that lovely table above. Uh, Random conditions, since this was a survey, both groups were actually surveyed randomly. You didn't know that from the question given. However, uh, it's something I have to know for fun facts. Uh, the last thing I'm going to check is the cell count expected conditions. Until I actually calculate the expecteds, we won't know that. But it appears we're meeting all of these conditions. So again, we're looking for the counted data. Check. The randomization condition. And then last, we want expected counts. In each cell greater than five. So let's go ahead and do the expected counts now. Um, or you know what, I'll do them when I do my test. So I want to do find my p-value and perform my test. So I'm going to just copy this data straight from my table and hope that it copies over nicely into my mini tab data over here. Um, so here we go. Uh-oh. Darn it, it recorded these two differently. So let's see. It's because I had that secondary column. So I'm going to take this data copy it and then move it, yeah, insert above it, delete all this junk, copy this. This probably would have been faster if I would have just typed it, geez. Yep, okay, and then I want to delete all of you. There we go, finally. Remember you have to hit delete twice to get rid of uh, starred values because that just re gets recorded as missing values otherwise. So I've got summarized data here that I'm going to be working with. <clears throat> which if you watch the other video, uh, it's a little bit different for the setup for doing the chi-square. So we're going to go up to stat, tables, and notice there's an option in here for the chi-square test for association and the chi-square test for goodness of fit. We don't want the goodness of fit because remember that's for one variable only. I'm going to be doing the test for association, but I'm not actually doing a test for association. I'm actually doing a test for homogeneity, but they use the same test. Okay. So I don't have raw data. 
I actually have summarized data in the two-way table. So I got to tell it which um, <clears throat> the columns that contain data. So that's my C2 through C6. Select those. And then it wants to know um, where the name labels are. So where are my groups is really what this is asking. And mine are in the C1 column. Um, you know, there we go. Is that not coming up? Columns with row labels. Oh, I've got this backwards. So the labels table optional good times. That's for C1. All right, and then I'm going to hit statistics because I want to check some options in here. Um, I do want to see the expected count so I can double check to make sure I'm meeting my at least five condition. Um, I'm going to not do the residuals for this one just because I really don't need it. I do want the chi-square test to be performed. Um, and it asks if I want to know the marginal counts. I don't really want those. I just want the counts for each cell. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and hit OK twice. And there's our test for association. So this first thing that pops up is your expecteds. Um, and if you notice, it lists your expecteds below your count, so it gives the count the original. That was that box I checked of include the counts. So here's the original, here's my expected, here's the original, here's my expected, here's my original, here's my expected, and so on and so forth through the rest of these. Um, so uh, as you're looking at this, we should be okay because if we look down our expected row and our other expected row, none of these are below 5, so we can go ahead and perform the chi-squared test. There's our Pearson chi-squared value with the degrees of freedom of 4, which makes sense because this is a 2 by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So when you multiply your, um, to find your degrees of freedom, you would do one less. So this would be counted as a 4, and this would be one less, so that would be counted as a 1, and 4 times 1 is 4. Uh, this already calculated the p-value for us, so we don't need to bother with that. So I'm just going to copy this little bit onto my Word document so that I have it, because I found the p-value for my test. I don't want to merge formatting. I want it to keep it like it was because it's Kai. Last but not leastly, we're going to go ahead and state our conclusion. So I'm hoping that you notice that uh, under these conditions and using technology, the chi squared test statistic is, um, you know, fairly large and the p-value is fairly small. So we would reject the null hypothesis, and therefore we would say that there is strong evidence that. <clears throat> the distributions differ. Fun times in Mathland. All right, and that's all I have for you for this video. Where did my little thing to stop this go? Yes, I see it. <laughs>